Hi all folks, this is Max from HighOnAndroid.com. Um, so I had a Ronnie Ashley um, was asking me on Google Plus, he's asking me, um, is Galaxy S2 Unlocked version compatible uh, with Sprint? Um, so I get these questions asked a lot, so maybe I clear things up here. Um, first of all, AT they, they all use different networks, um, the US carriers, there's Sprint, uh, there's AT&T, there's T-Mobile, and uh, did I forget something? And Verizon, right? So Verizon and Sprint are um, CDMA. Um, basically, uh, never mind their data, the voice calling, they use CDMA technology, which is different from GSM. GSM is used by T-Mobile and AT&T. Um, CDMA in the world, uh, and the US, in the US, the only carriers that are using it is Sprint and uh, um, Sprint and Verizon. And also Boost Mobile and I think Cricket, they all use CDMA. Anyway, CDMA is completely different technology from GSM, so you can't get a GSM phone to work on CDMA. That means your voice calls are not going to work. So since your voice calls are not going to work, um, you're not going to be able to use your phone as a phone. Um, also, in the world, they, uh, I think the only other country that use CDMA is South Korea and Japan. And uh, maybe there's a couple more countries. But everybody else, everyone else, 99% um, use GSM, which is the standard for voice calling. And um, basically, if you want to use your phone outside the US, um, you will probably want to get a phone that uses those GSM bands. And another good thing about GSM phones is that you know you can swap in the SIM cards if you have an unlocked phone, um, and you know you can use it everywhere everywhere in the world. Um, so that's the good part about it. What's good about CDMA? I think it's actually uh, it, I don't know. I, I think it's actually better technology. It's more reliable. Um, it's more. I, I think it's more uh, digital, um, whereas GSM is more uh, analog. So that's the primary differences. So if you get an unlocked phone, unlocked phone just means that it's on GSM. And uh, you can only use it on US carriers that support GSM, which is T-Mobile and AT&T. Now here's another thing you have to know is that AT&T uh, uses 1900 megahertz um, for their 3G data and you know HSPA+. Uh, while T-Mobile uses uh, 1700 megahertz and 850 megahertz or something like that, and T-Mobile, T-Mobile's frequencies is only used by T-Mobile, like in the whole world for the U.S. T-Mobile. That's why T-Mobile sucks because um, you can't really use unlocked phones. There are there are just like a handful of phones you can use on T-Mobile that's unlocked, which is the uh, the Nexus phones, like the Galaxy Nexus. You can use it on um, T-Mobile and uh, probably Nexus One. I think there's an unlocked version, and also unlocked Nexus S. Um, those are the only phones you can use on T-Mobile and AT&T. If you're on uh, T-Mobile, the only phones you can use if you want 3G data uh, or 4G data is you know T-Mobile phones or phones that support that frequency. And most of the time, you know, manufacturers are gonna uh, when they make unlocked phones, they're gonna make it for the the world band 1900 megahertz. Um, so here's the thing: you can use it as a phone, and you can get Edge on T-Mobile also. Let's say if you bought an unlocked Galaxy Note right now on Amazon, you can use it on T-Mobile. But um, the bad thing is you, you'll only get Edge Edge data because the 3G you know antennas are not in the gal unlocked Galaxy Note. But Galaxy Nexus, you can use it on T-Mobile. I have it and I've uh, been using it fine on T-Mobile. So those are all the differences. So what is the best phone so you can use it everywhere in the world? You're a world um, traveler, uh, globe trotter. Then uh, the best uh, best phone probably if you're in the US is AT&T. Uh, AT&T phones, even though they're locked, you can usually unlock them using some uh, these sites. You pay 20 bucks for the code or um, there's a way to hack it, but you know, I would just probably just pay, pay 20 bucks or get an unlocked phone That's what I do because then you're, you're not in contract and if you think about it um, If you get it in contract in for two years on AT&T 
um, that means you're going to be losing, um, you're going to actually spend, let's say it's 50 bucks, well, let's say 60 bucks total a month for two years. Let me see, let me do a calculator here. 60 times 24 months, that's $1,440 you pay for uh, under contract. Um, if you're still in contract, the better deal is to get um, unlocked, you know, phone. Plus, unlocked phones are great, like the Galaxy Note or the Galaxy S2. Even there's already ICS ROMs for it. There's more development, and Samsung releases their phones earlier, um, you know, than the other phones. So you get a, a like a six month, you know, you, you get a, a a six month ahead of every other phone. So that that's what I like about unlocked phones, and uh, you know if you're if if you're gonna if your contract's up and you have to sign up for a contract, then of course you can <coughs> you should get the contract because you're gonna be paying for your service anyways. But otherwise, get an unlocked version is better. Um, also, the 4G LTE is out for AT&T, but you know 4G LTE does drain your battery like a battery hogger, like a pig. Um, anyway, but the HSPA Plus, which is the unlocked versions, is good still because it's still really fast. I find the, uh, the AT&T HSPA is very good. Um, I get like pff, consistent 3 to 4 megabits per second download. Um, and I get really reliable signals on HSPA Plus. At the worst, I'll drop to 3G and it's, you know, it's completely usable. And an another factor you have to factor in is that AT&T charges you um, $10 extra if you go over the two gigabytes, if you if you bought the two gigabytes plan. So it's $10 per gigabyte extra. Um, if you watch like three Netflix movies, you use up like one or two gigs already. So if you watch a movie every day, 30 movies, um, and you're on two gigabyte plan, then uh, you end up, you know, spending, ex you know, you, you end up going, um, Using about using up extra like 20 more than 20 gigabytes, which equals almost 200 bucks, um, unless you have a grandfather plan. So you know having a grandfather plan on any carrier is good. Um, the only carrier that gives you uh, unlimited right now is Sprint, and Sprint's actually pretty good, pretty reliable. It just all depends on where you live. And uh, another thing about Sprint is that even though it's unlimited, you can't really use your phones um, in other countries. You can actually use uh, Sprint phones and CDMA phones in like South Korea. I go there and it works, but you would never actually want to use it because the roaming fees are so high. Even if or on any other carrier, the best way is to swap out SIM cards. So you need a SIM, and then you need a SIM card supported uh, phone, like you know, AT&T phone. And if you have a T-Mobile phone that doesn't support the world band, then you can go to another another country and you know you can get voice, but you won't get 3G data. Like the G2 phone on T-Mobile, um, my friend took it, you know, to Philippines or something, and you know he, he was able to use it as a phone. Uh, I unlocked it for him, but um, he can't, he couldn't get 3G data. So that sucks, you know. So I think the best way to, if you're a globe trotter, get an AT&T SIM card. Um, you don't even have to get the phone; just get an unlocked uh, version uh, phone. That way, anytime you want a new phone, you can just buy an unlocked version. And you can buy an unlocked version like everywhere, you know, especially if you're out of the country. Uh, most phones sold, you know, out of the out of the US, like in you know, Philippines, Thailand, or uh, I'm not sure about Korea. Korea's kind of locked down. Um, you can get an unlocked version and uh, you know, I heard Thailand you can get prepaid SIM cards, so you can go there and just prepay and you know start using phone. So I just hope that clears things. So there's four networks. Um, the best one, I think, you know, if you're a globe trotter, globe trotter um, is the AT&T phone. But if you're in the, if if you never go out, travel outside the U.S., um, then definitely Sprint. I think is the best value because you do get unlimited. And uh, I have a friend who tethers his Sprint. Um, Evo 4G and then now it's uh, it was 3D and then now it's you know he's he's using it as a home internet and if you get great 4G signals you can be you know downloading at 10 megabits per second download or even higher. Um, also Verizon is great, uh, just very expensive again. It, if you don't have a grandfather unlimited plan, uh, I do for Verizon, T-Mobile, so which is good. But um, then you're good to go. So um, so. 
Another thing is that most of the time you can't use Sprint phones on Verizon because they try to lock it down and you can't use Verizon phones and uh, Sprint phone. Um, the only, yeah, so I would say at and is the best deal if you want, if you like getting new, if you're like me and you just buy new phones every time it comes out. Uh, and you don't have to keep your old phone, you can sell it, then get the unlocked version and you know, the value of these unlock phones are pretty high um, within the six months so you can sell it for another hundred bucks more you can get a new phone every six months um, so that, that's a good deal and uh, if you're on Sprint um, you're out of luck or Verizon you're just stuck with their phones that's the only thing I don't like being in contract um, so I hope this clears this video clears up and if you have any comments or <laughs> suggestions uh, don't forget to leave it in the comments line yeah. Um, Alright, see y'all later. I hope that helps.